In Kenya, agriculture remains a vital foundation of our economic growth and development. The sector contributes all the way to 30% to our GDP, account for 7% of our manufacturing, and contributes about 80% of employment of rural populations. The National Long-Term Economic Development Blueprint, our Vision 2030, recognizes the significant enhancement of agricultural productivity and agro-based industrialization to be critical drivers of sustainable growth. The work of actualizing this ambition is underway through initiatives that support farmers to access high quality and appropriate inputs. We have been able to increase productivity for two successive years. Just in the last two years, we have registered about 5.6 million farmers. And through an e-voucher system, we are distributing fertilizer, making it much more transparent, much more efficient, and much more targeted. And we have seen results of making sure that farmers have access to the correct inputs and correct seeds and appropriate quantities of fertilizers. Further, crops and livestock insurance programs are showing promising results by enabling farmers to stay productive in the face of risk and uncertainty, especially on matters climate. Additionally, the government doubled investment in our homegrown school feeding program to US dollars 30 million in 2023, enhancing its capacity to provide school meals and keep vulnerable children in school and at the same time support local food systems in the communities around our schools. It is now well known globally. Kenya continues to champion radical reforms to the institutional architecture of the global financial system in order to promote fairness and inclusivity both in representation and decision making as well as in providing resources that can be sustainably invested to address Africa's unique challenges. The flagship outcome of the inaugural Africa Climate Summit and the Nairobi Declaration called for international support in addressing the links between low climate resilience and our country's sovereign debt burden and the need for a global financial system that empowers economies to pursue inclusive economic transformation and climate action simultaneously. It is encouraging that we have gathered here to affirm our recognition that the fight against hunger demands committed collective action on an ambitious scale. This is important and indeed a historic consensus, but only the first step on the road to a world without hunger. Our journey will require boldness and collaboration. And that's why I commend international organizations like UNIDO and FAO for their instrumental roles in fostering sustainable food systems and in promoting greater awareness among different stakeholders. It is time for us to deploy the power of our partnerships beyond policy making to securing substantial commitment in pursuit of tangible actions like we have seen in Ethiopia. It hasn't happened by chance. It is deliberate. It is intentional. It is well thought out. Expanding irrigation systems to support our agricultural productivity, especially in the context of unpredictable weather, making sure that there is adequate water storage in dams, in ponds, and in other systems, ensuring that there is adequate infrastructure to support 
post-harvest management of produce, ensuring that there is adequate and appropriate infrastructure to support agro-processing and value addition, not only enhances and increases returns to farmers, but also reduces post-harvest losses, as I have stated earlier. On our idealistic aspiration, it must be anchored on clearly defined measurable goals and complemented by a determination to track the progress of implementation in order to usher all our brothers and sisters and children to a world where no one goes hungry. Kenya stands ready in full support of this noble global mission. And I want to thank Prime Minister Abi for convening us and also to thank the Africa Union for being a partner to this very important endeavor as we seek as a continent to provide solutions for the challenges that face our continent because indeed we can and a world without hunger is surely possible. Dr. William Samoy Ruto, President of the Republic of Kenya for those inspiring messages of encouragement. This gathering is important because it mobilizes us to reflect about the state of our shared responsibility and commitment to guaranteeing universal access to safe, sufficient, and nutritious food. The 2024 State of Food Security and Nutrition in the World Report states that in 2023, last year, 730 million people in the world faced hunger. In Africa, the situation was even more grave with one in every five Africans affected. The report further revealed that over 2.8 billion people globally cannot afford a healthy diet. And the severity of hunger is classified as alarming in many countries, including Burundi, Chad, Madagascar, Somalia, South Sudan, and Yemen. Let us bear in mind that beyond food insecurity, hunger represents a condition of profound poverty of well-being, health, as well as freedom, opportunity, and dignity. It is time to attend to the need to maximize the potential of our agricultural and food systems to feed the world's population as a matter of urgency. One fact stands out on the scope of work that must be undertaken. A third of all food produced for humanity's consumption is lost or wasted, particularly at the post-harvest phase. And this is due to insufficient infrastructure, technology, and local capacity. This loss translates to about 1.3 billion tons annually and costs the world about a trillion dollars and represents a significant component of our total food deficit. The stark condition of the global food security situation demonstrates that we are considerably off track and without a radical strategic turnaround are unlikely to meet the second sustainable development goal that is zero hunger. The only way out of this tragic failure requires us to undertake bold and ambitious collective actions in tackling the root causes of hunger. We must develop agricultural communities and systems that meet the unique needs of our diverse requirements. We must invest aggressively to expand sustainable production in all value chains that constitute our food systems and prioritize strategies aimed at building resilient food systems.